What's cracking, y'all? Today we're going to talk about why you would want to modify your static screen on a Mazer type grinder. I got a question in the comments from Aldi, maybe Aldi. I hope I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. I think you hit me up on Instagram too. And Aldi says, I saw a video where you took the static screen off a of rover to modify it. Why would you do this? Do I need to do it? I got a rover too. Should I look into this? What's the deal? So your static screen basically makes sure that when your coffee's coming out of the grinding chamber and into your doser or your funnel or however your grinder's set up, that it comes out in an even and controlled manner. So you can see when we turn this grinder on, coffee comes through that static screen and just drops down the doser funnel all nice and neat. Now, if you take that static screen off, what you get is a huge mess. Coffee will come out of the grounds chamber and just spray everywhere, it's horrible. Coffee will stick to the sides of the funnel, not all of it will make it down to the bottom and into the porta filter. And sometimes you can get so much built up on the walls that you can actually block the exit chute of the funnel. So you'll be grinding coffee, grinding coffee, grinding coffee, and nothing comes out of the funnel. It's all just building up inside there. And then you just tap it or something and then everything falls out. Full blown nightmare. Now the problem with static screens is they can cause clumping. And if these clumps don't get broken up during the distribution process, they basically turn into these tiny little hot pockets of uneven extraction. These little pockets of coffee that are more dense than the coffee around them. And since we all know we want even density and even distribution for the most even extraction possible, clumps are a problem. In some cases, clumping would get so bad that I actually saw coffee grounds backed up on the top side of the burr set where they should be going in. Now, if I didn't see this, I wouldn't even think that this could happen. It seems pretty impossible, but I saw it. I think there were a couple other things going on and the static screen was just one contributor to part of a bigger problem. So if no static screen is bad, but static screens are also bad, What's the happy medium? Well, the static screen on this grinder is actually one example of a happy medium. You can see that the wires don't cover the entirety of the exit chute. For a long time, pretty much all of these type of grinders had the wires going all the way across the exit chute. Think of a little tic-tac-toe board. So what we would do to find that balance between clumping and spraying is just remove little pieces of that wire one section at a time. And you can do this two ways. You can do this the easy way and not take the funnel off. All you have to do is remove the finger guard, go in from the front and use some wire wire clippers and just clip off sections of the wire. Or you can do it the hard way and take the entire funnel off, totally remove the screen, snip it with wire cutters, and then file it down, polish it so that there's no burrs and it looks absolutely perfect. This is what I did. I think I wasted a ton of time doing it for basically no reward. So unless you're incredibly OCD like I am, going in from the front and not removing the funnel is totally fine. So how many wires should you take off? What's the optimal configuration? Well, every grinder and every type of coffee needs something a little bit different. Darker roasted coffees tend to clump a lot more than lighter roasted coffees, and every grinder is its own unique animal. So I'd recommend removing one section of the wire at a time, grinding a little bit out, testing it, and if that's still not working, go ahead and remove another. In some cases, we ran some of our rovers with just one horizontal wire on the bottom, and that was it. But start slow, a little bit at a time. You can always take more wire off, but you can't really put it back on, and if you accidentally take more off, then you gotta order a new static screen, wait for it to come, it's a huge pain in the ass, it's just not fun. I'd also recommend only doing this if you need to do it. And be aware that in this sliding scale of spraying to clumping, the more wire that you remove, the more clumping that you remove, the more spraying you will get. So your grinder will be potentially a little bit more messy. It's just part of the game. So if you got a Mazer type grinder and you're having some clumping problems, take off some screen and see what happens. Hope this was useful for y'all. I really, really enjoyed this question, probably because I wasted so much of my life modifying screens back in the day. Stay dialed and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.